a Hyperloop. There's no denying the appeal of Hyperloop, for one thing, it's pretty cool. The idea of whisking passengers across the country at super high speed in a levitating tube is impressive. All the pods we've seen so far are sleek, streamlined structures that wouldn't look out of place in a futuristic sci-fi movie. Before we continue, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below to get a notification on our next video. Hyperloop is a new form of ground transport currently in development by many companies. It could see passengers traveling at over 700 miles an hour in a floating pod that races along inside giant low-pressure tubes, either above or below ground. There are two big differences between Hyperloop and traditional rail. Firstly, the pods carrying passengers travel through tubes or tunnels from which most of the air has been removed to reduce friction. This should allow the pods to travel at up to 750 miles per hour. Secondly, rather than using wheels like a train or car, the pods are designed to float on air skis, using the same basic idea as an air hockey table, or use magnetic levitation to reduce friction. Supporters argue that Hyperloop could be cheaper and faster than train or car travel, and less polluting than air travel. They claim that it's also quicker and cheaper to build than traditional high-speed rail. Hyperloop could therefore be used to take the pressure off gridlocked roads, making travel between cities easier, and potentially unlocking major economic benefits as a result. It's still not clear where Hyperloops will be established, but several companies have sketched out routes in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. Potential routes include New York to Washington DC, Pune to Mumbai, Kansas City to St. Louis, Bratislava to Brno, Vijaywada and Amravati, and many more. The basic idea of Hyperloop as envisioned by Musk is that the passenger pods or capsules travel through a tube, either above or below ground. To reduce friction, most, but not all of the air is removed from the tubes by pumps. In Musk's model, the pressure of the air inside the Hyperloop tube has an operating pressure of 100 pascals, which reduces the drag force of the air by 1,000 times relative to sea level conditions, and would be equivalent to flying above 150,000 feet. The Hyperloop capsules in Musk's model float above the tube's surface on a set of 28 air-bearing skis, similar to the way that the puck floats just above the table on an air hockey game. One major difference is that it is the pod, not the track, that generates the air cushion to keep the tube as simple and cheap as possible. Other versions of Hyperloop use magnetic levitation rather than air skis to keep the passenger pods above the tracks. The pod would get its initial velocity from an external linear electric motor, which would accelerate it to high subsonic velocity and then give it a boost every 70 miles or so. In between, the pod would coast along in near vacuum. Each capsule could carry 28 passengers, other versions aim to carry up to 40, plus some luggage. Another version of the pods could carry cargo and vehicles. Pods would depart every 2 minutes or every 30 seconds at peak usage. The pods will get their velocity from an external linear electric motor, effectively a round induction motor, like the one in the Tesla Model S, rolled flat. Under Musk's model, the Hyperloop would be powered by solar panels placed on the top of the tube which would allow the system to generate more energy than it needs to run. For the LA to San Francisco Hyperloop that Musk envisaged, he came up with a price tag of under $6 billion, spreading the capital cost over 20 years and adding in operational costs. Musk came up with the figure of $20 plus operating costs for a one-way ticket on the passenger Hyperloop. Most of the cost of the system lies in building. The tube network, the overall cost of the tube, pillars, vacuum pumps, and stations was calculated at just over $4 billion for the passenger version of Hyperloop, $7 billion for a slightly larger version that could also take freight. The cost of the capsules was put at around $1.35 million apiece, with 40 needed for the service, the cost of these is around $54 million, or $70 million for a mix of passenger and cargo capsules. That's less than 9% of the cost of the proposed passenger-only high-speed rail system. Critics of Hyperloop have warned that traveling in the tube might be an uncomfortable experience, due to nausea-inducing acceleration, plus lateral g forcian bends in the route. 
However, it was revealed that a journey via Hyperloop will feel about the same as riding in an elevator or a passenger plane. Traveling in a concrete pipe in a windowless pod means there isn't going to be much to look at. Musk's original vision said that beautiful landscape will be displayed in the cabin and each passenger will have to access their entertainment system. Despite doing much to lay the groundwork for Hyperloop services, Musk initially said he was too busy to develop his service. There are now several companies working to turn the idea into reality, including startups and others that have been working on the idea for some time already. Among them are Virgin Hyperloop One, HTT, Transpod, Arivo, and others. Each is developing a slightly different set of technologies, but the underlying idea remains the same. Despite saying he was too busy, in February, the Washington Post reported that Musk's boring company had received a permit for some preparatory and excavation work in New York. In October 2017, Maryland's Department of Transportation also gave conditional approval to the construction of a boring company tunnel from Baltimore to Washington, allowing it to dig under state roads. Thanks for watching this video. What do you think of the Hyperloop? Would you want to be a passenger on the Hyperloop? Please share your opinions in the comments section below, and remember to click the subscribe button to be the first person to watch new videos on this channel.